and that's where we will be working with District Attorney Rawlings, and we wholeheartedly expect that it will be. But I don't want to say anything that would be misleading. And again, while I'm up here, I can't thank you all enough. The citizens of Boston are sick and tired of this revolving door. Just like I mentioned Utley before, on an electronic bracelet when he allegedly murdered someone. How much do we have to stand for? Again, some people cannot be rehabilitated in our society because they're too violent. If you have to put a bracelet on someone, you can't trust them in the first place. So whether it's COVID-19 or bracelets, they are not panaceas for rehabilitation. This, these arrests today, is just telling you what people have been saying. You ask people if they see something, say something, and they do, and then an individual's back on the street with a bracelet committing crimes. How can we do that here this day in society? Work with us. Come on, tell us who's doing what. And when our great community does, just smacked in the face. I understand about New Testaments and turning the other cheek, but they're beheading people out there. They're killing people. So I'm glad for this federal partnership because it sends a true message to those that don't want to adhere to the rules of society. We will find you, we will lock you up, and we will hold you accountable. Not because of our reps, because that's what the people in this commonwealth deserve. They pay for rehabilitation, not bracelets. So keep in mind the young children, all they have to see, traumatized by all this violence, seniors, families, while these individuals keep getting break after break after break. And for God's sakes, I wish y'all would interview some of the people in the neighborhoods because they're tired of this. They deserve better. So again, this multi-jurisdictional, multi-agency partnership is what's needed because as the U.S. Attorney says, said, stated, you talk to gang members, I've been in the streets for 37 years, we can do what we want, the courts are closed, we can do what we want, not today and not going forward. Thank you. Commissioner, why don't we have uh, two other questions? Sure. Slightly off topic, if I could. First of all, your thoughts on the possible statewide police certification process, and then uh, your thoughts on the, the data on the field interrogations and observations and what that should be. Sure. On the, on the statewide licensing, that's up to the governor. I'll tell you what, in law enforcement, no one hates a bad cop more than good cops. So if someone's committing atrocities when they have a gun and a badge, I don't want them on my department, and I don't want there to be a sealed record so they can go on to the next part, department and department. So those are things to be worked on. Now for the FILs, oh my goodness. There was a hue and cry, if you stop someone, document it. So we did. There was another study before this one on interactions with the police, 236,000, where it was found that 5% of the individuals stopped were worth 40% of the numbers, and another 20% on top of that were just observations. So how can you ask the Boston Police Department that when you're going into the areas that are plagued with crime, and because of socioeconomics and other reasons, unfortunately there are neighborhoods of color, black, Latino, and Cabo Verde, this is a black man saying it, that's in the streets, not hiding in an ivory tower, just criticizing. So we document our interactions. And who says all of our interactions are negative? I know when I was out there, some of the kids I stopped, we talked, we laughed. And some of the times we're deterring crime. If you're from rival gang A and B, and I see you on the B side, I'm like, hey, you're not supposed to be over here. You know what's up. So listen to the people who are actually in the street not Monday morning quarterbacks. Because those same Monday morning quarterbacks are saying, document everybody you stop. So we do. And then, oh my God, you're stopping an exorbitant amount of African Americans. If I am a black cop, and the caller's black, and the person I'm talking to black, should I wait for a Caucasian person to come along to make it fair? As the US attorney alluded to, when people ask us to investigate, we investigate. When we interact, we document. And unfortunately, the majority of the crime, the shootings, the stabbings, and everything uh, are happening in neighborhoods of color. And when we stop to talk to people, it doesn't mean they're targeted. Sometimes we're just talking to them. And we document it because if we don't document it, we get criticized. 
So, catch-22 for some folks, they can sit back and point fingers, but I never see them out in the streets. We will continue to do our job. We will continue to work with the community. So.